Hi everybody, so today we're going to do a case study. So some of you might be looking at the screen right now and saying, Lucy, why are you wearing that abomination? Well, I would like to introduce you to the very first corset I ever made. Yes, this thing is seven years old, I think, and I'm going to show you all the parts of it and show you how much I've improved over the years. So here is the front, the side, and the back. So let's take a look. So this was made out of a single layer of bed sheet. I kid you not. Yes, on the back of the 9769 pattern, it called for couture or possibly, you know, duck or canvas or twill as a substitute. But I was determined to spend as little as possible on this project. So I said to myself, oh, I can just make a double layer of bed sheet and then it'll be twice as strong. But then laziness took over and I only made it in one layer. I was only going to be using it underneath a costume anyway, so I really didn't care what it looked like. So this corset I made in a size 6. I'll put my man hand on here to give you a size reference. And it was supposed to have a 23 inch waist and I deliberately even sewed larger seam allowances just so it would have a smaller waist. So note to anybody who uses this pattern, I really don't think the sizes are accurate. But in addition to inaccurate sizes, I think just the material I used was rubbish. So did the material stretch? Heck yes! You can almost see how the the threads are kind of coming apart in the weave and you can almost see how there's like almost pores in this material. You can like see my fingers through it. I don't know if that's coming through in the camera but I can definitely see it's becoming a little bit transparent. I had a 26 inch waist when I made this and I could close it in the back at the time. Um, right now after an indulging in so many unfrosted strawberry pop tarts I'm about 29 inches. Don't worry that will still go down at some point but I can still close this so it must have stretched um, you can see in some places where I had taken it in actually um, that was when I was probably about 22 years old and uh, and I took it in on the larger panels just just like that just so it would have a smaller waist and uh, and then later on about a year later I let it out again because I can't wait yay did the material rip? Well, surprisingly, it only ripped in a couple places, like here. Um, this was when I was letting out the seams and I was being a little bit too vigorous with my seam ripper, <laughs> unfortunately. But it never actually ripped um, under the stress of the corset. Except in this place here where one of the grommets ripped out, but I'll get to that a little bit later on. If you're wondering what all the pink is, um, this was where I was marking all my panels. I didn't have any fabric markers, so I instead used chalk, but I didn't use Taylor's chalk. Oh no, I was too cheap for that. So I used sidewalk chalk. Yeah, um, yeah, sidewalk chalk. And it was kind of greasy and stuff, and it never actually like washed out properly or anything. So yeah, it's kind of left stains all over the corset, especially on the inside here. But this was the first time I actually did flat felling seams, so I was rather proud of that. So also on the inside here you can see all my internal boning channels, and even though the pattern called for a specific half inch wide tubular um, boning channel tape, I decided not to invest in that and I just bought some twill tape instead. Yeah, this is um, one inch wide twill tape that I just folded over double and then sewed it down. So it's rather bulky on the inside. Um, I'm surprised that none of the bones actually like rubbed their way through this tape over the years. And as you can see, there is no waste tape, which probably contributed to the stretching. So inside my boning channels, I, I don't even think I want to show you that. Um, um, should I? No, no, I don't think I'm going to. Um, all of you vintage corset collectors out there would probably flay me alive because I went to Goodwill and I stumbled across two humongous um, old corset girdles, the ones with the um, fan lacing in it, and I took it apart. I, I bought them for about $5 each and I took them apart and I recycled them for the bones, so please don't kill me. Um, but some of these bones were too short, so um, what I did was I actually had um, plastic boning along the entire length of some of the boning channels and then I had the metal bones that were like right in the center so it would like 
take a lot of the strain at the waist and you could probably see like some of the bumps on here like the the plastic boning would start here and you can see that little bump there Oop, that is where the metal boning would start and it went down to about there I think and then the plastic boning for the remainder so that was oh my gosh this is such a hack job I want to cry right now so you could actually see how little support it gave, especially in like the dummy bust area when I had it on before because there's only like plastic boning to support this and you can see how easily it bends. So let us take a look at the grommets, shall we? At least I had the sense to use two part grommets in here. Um, the two black panels are double thickness to hold the, the center back bones and also the grommets, but it still did not prevent some of the grommets from ripping out here. Well, actually only one of the grommets. Um, when I was making this, I actually used a an old ice pick to form the holes, and then I had to use pliers to put in the grommets by hand, and that, I remember my hands were killing me for days after that. I actually had to have my older brother help me to finish off these grommets because my hands were just totally destroyed by the pliers. I That was the day that I said I would never use hand pliers to set grommets again. So what else can I show you? Well, as you can see here, the center back half inch um, boning here is actually too long. It doesn't stop right above the binding here. It actually extends right down to the end of the binding because I didn't have any means of um, filing down my bones. So you can see the binding is stitched um, around here and then it suddenly stops. And then there's kind of a hack job to like overcast stitch the binding together at the end that is so ugly oh my goodness i'm embarrassed and here is the busk oh dear <laughs> guess who didn't double stitch her busk in? Me. so as you can see i don't know if you can see in the close-up here i actually um had the busk pull out all along here um just from too much stress so i had to overcast um all down the front part of the busk here by hand. Um, really, really tiny overcast stitch. And I actually did an overcast stitch like in these little um, areas within the loops as well. And you can see on this side here, um, it's coming apart on the knob side. So if I wanted to, I would go back and fix that, but I think I'm just gonna take the busk out and use it in another corset. You can see here that there are um, some stains from the fray stop. Um, but the fray style had um, mixed with the greasy sidewalk chalk <laughs> and formed some stains there. And um, this busk, it cost me $20 when I went to Anime North for the first time when I was like 16 years old. I bought it there and I remember how much it cost me because I remember how expensive I thought it was. And oh my gosh, look, one of my brackets is bent. Can you see that? You see how that's bent on an angle? What is wrong with me? As you can see, I have come a long way since the making of this corset. Um, there's probably a six year hiatus between the making of this corset and the making of my second corset. But let me tell you, you can ask questions about how to make corsets until the cows come home, but you will never fully really understand how to make a corset until you actually get the materials and make one yourself. The total cost of materials of this corset, not including the busk, which I can probably fix and take out and put into another corset, but the total cost apart from the busk is probably a bit uh, less than $15. So some of you might be thinking, well, that's a lot of money to waste on a garment that you may never wear. But honestly, no $15 book could possibly um, give me the experience and the information that I got from making this corset with my own two hands. So like this corset, your first corset might be far from perfect, but let me tell you, once you actually start making a corset yourself, that learning curve, that initial slope, it, that's practically vertical. You learn so much in such a short amount of time, it's unbelievable. And you know what, that learning curve, that never really levels down to zero. You're still learning new things all the time. I'm still learning new things with every single corset I make, and I've made nine corsets so far. And you know what, I'm still learning things. Even, um, Looking at my tutorials that I made five months ago compared to how much I know now, it is astonishing how much I've learned and how far I've come in my sewing skills. Just simply from my own experiences and from talking to viewers like you and having other corset makers challenge me. And it's, it's simply amazing. You just need to um, really just get off your seat and try to make one yourself. 
Is this corset embarrassing to me? Oh yes, <laughs> yes, it is very embarrassing to me. Part of me really can't believe that I'm still showing you guys this corset, but this is to prove that everybody has to start somewhere and it doesn't really matter what the end product looks like. It's just the, what really matters is that you start, that you're not afraid to try something new. So that's all I have to say and I will talk to you in the next video, okay? Bye. It has some metallic thread running down vertically through it. It's very pretty up close. I wish you guys could see it. Corset but, making, um, and who have been mentoring me, they know the type of grief that's, that I've been going through with this corset because the fabric is actually a nightmare.